when we first started out and we created our Facebook page, the first thing we did was introduce the business and tell them what we were doing and ask them to share. And we just sat there and refreshed and watched our business page just explode on day one. My name is Kimberly Turner and I love all things baking and business. I went from having a home-based bakery to opening a storefront in less than five months, which I successfully grew for nearly seven years. We moved our family back to our home state of Iowa where I restarted my home baking business and started slinging cupcakes at local farmers markets from my renovated cupcake camper. I'm sharing the strategies and services that I use to grow my bakery year after year that you can implement to reach the goals that you want to achieve in your own baking business. Have questions on how to get started or feeling stuck and don't know how to grow? Stick around, I have so much to share. This is the Hey Cupcake Podcast. Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. Today, I want to talk to you about how to grow your bakery business in the very beginning. When you're just starting out, you've just like set up your business, you're legal, you're ready to just hit the ground running, but you need customers. You need a following. So I'm going to share with you five ways to grow your bakery business in the very beginning. And these are all things that we did in the very beginning. And even some of these we've done, you know, throughout the year. So it's just not something that you have to do at the beginning. You can absolutely do these over and over again as your business grows, as you hit a plateau, as you're moving forward. But in the beginning, I will say the best way, the number one way to really start your business following, to grow your business is by word of mouth. I will sing it from the rooftops. I will always tell people that is your best way to share your business, to promote your business, is to ask the people that you already know to share your business, whether it's on a social media platform, whether it's just in person, but it costs nothing. And so remind them, hey, you know, and even just recently, last couple of months, I've been in business now for almost a decade. I feel like I will occasionally put a post out and say, Hey, did you know that you can help me grow my business with zero dollars just by sharing my page? When we first started out and we created our Facebook page, the first thing we did was introduce the business and tell them what we were doing and ask them to share. And I can't remember the number of likes that we had in the first day, but it was literally hundreds. And it was just by the people that we already knew, our friends, our family, our friends of friends who took a second to click share. And we just sat there and refreshed and watched our business page just explode on day one. So that is probably like the first thing I tell everyone to do is create your business page on whatever social media platform you have. You can share it onto your personal page or profile and just say, hey, friends, this is what I'm doing. I would love for you to help me spread the word. And I think you'll really be surprised at the response that you get from that. And then from there, you can post updates like, hey, we just hit 300 likes because these are the people that you already know and they know, like, and trust you. So when you're asking for referrals and you see this all the time on social media, who are you going to trust when you ask, say, for a referral for plumbing service or a painting service? Are you going to trust a Google search or are you going to trust your neighbor who said, we had XYZ company do this service for us and they were amazing. I highly recommend them. You are absolutely going to take the referral of your neighbor over a Google search. I would. So that is just a really great way to ask your people to help spread the word about your business. Number two is get involved in community events. So starting out, we did a lot of like small markets. We did church bazaars, set up a table and sold cupcakes and cookies. And it's just a great way to introduce yourself to um, different people in the community, people who hold events in the community, and just to help get your name out there and get your products out there. 
You can also donate cakes or gift certificates or gift cards to certain community events. You can sponsor events. Uh, one thing that we did was um, in the school line at our elementary school, there's a long chain link fence. And along the chain link fence at the drop-off line <laughs> that we sat in forever every morning and every afternoon, it seemed like, right? There were banners of businesses who sponsored the school. And so for a little bit of money, you could pay for a banner that they would hang all year long. And, and everybody in that pickup line would see that every single day, if not twice a day. So that's a great way to get your name out there, especially if you are a baker, that is your target market. Like who, who are the people who are ordering birthday cakes and cupcakes and desserts? They are people who have kids who are having birthday parties, who are celebrating all these life events. That is your target market. It's a great way to get in front of hundreds of eyeballs of the people that you want to target for your business. Another event that we did that was hugely successful was reach out to the local elementary schools in our area, which we had, I think there was three elementary schools nearby. And we offered to do a spirit night once a month with each of the schools. So I don't know, I'm sure most schools do this. Um, a lot of them do like a pizza night or an ice cream night, like at the Dairy Queen or Pizza Hut. And a percentage of your purchases at those places will be given back to the school. And so we did that as well. And at first, honestly, we just did like they had to sign in and we tracked like the specific sales and a percentage of those sales would go back to the school. And that just kind of got a little difficult to track. And so just to make things easier, easy, we just set from 2 p.m. to close any sales that come in during that time, we'll give 10% back to the school. And so again, you're getting your target market to come to your business to purchase your cupcakes, your cakes, your cookies, your whatever, and love them, right? And know that you're there and want to come back when they need cupcakes for a birthday party at school or a birthday cake for their birthday party, um, not just for their kids, but for their family and their friends. So that was a great way to really target our audience, the people that we really wanted to come in the doors. And that was every month for three schools. So three times a month, we had our target market walking in the door after school. So love doing the spirit nights with the schools. Number three, doing like a giveaway or a contest, especially on like your social media platform. As a way to really get your name out there, you could offer a free product. So say you want to offer like a free dozen cupcakes or a free, um, a free birthday cake that they can redeem like within the first year for, the, for their kid's birthday or something. That is a great way to get people to share your post, share your business because they want to win that stuff, right? And of course, you're going to have to follow all the rules for Facebook, Instagram, however you're going to do that. But um, it's a great way to increase your, your following and a great way to get your product out there and for people to notice. So everybody loves free stuff, right? So a giveaway is a, is a fun way to really um, promote your business and your products. Number four is to join your local chamber of commerce. I don't think we did this right away, but it's something that I did later that I absolutely loved. Um, was, was becoming a part of the chamber, attending the meetings, attending the networking events. It's a great way to meet other business owners in your area. Some things that I was able to do because of other businesses in the community was to collaborate. A couple examples, I partnered with a financial advisor company that was just around the corner from us. And we would print out coupons for a free cupcake. And they would take those coupons and put them inside a birthday card that they sent out to all of their clients throughout the year. And when that client would come in and redeem that cupcake, most likely they weren't just coming in for one cupcake. They would get more than that because they'd have to take them home to their family or get some extra cupcakes for their kids. So it was a great way to get new people into your business, but also for them to make a sale rather than just come in and get their free cupcake and leave. Now that did happen 
but you're getting foot traffic. You're getting people in the door. They know that you're there and they're going to love your product, right? So when they think of, oh, I need some cupcakes for X, Y, Z, they'll know they'll come to you for those products. So it's a great way to help spread the word, a great way to partner with other businesses. And then at the end of every month, I would just count up the coupons that were redeemed, let the company know, and they would reimburse us for those. We also partnered with a dance company in town. And every year when they would register for new classes, they would provide a goodie bag for all the new kids who signed up. And inside the goodie bags was, you guessed it, a coupon for a free cupcake. And so they would come in and get their free cupcake. And again, most likely they would get more than just one because they probably had more than one child <laughs> or they had a family that they would want to get like a six pack or a dozen and take those home to enjoy. And again, just a great way to get your target market in the door, let them know that you're there, let them fall in love with your product and always seem like people would, would almost always buy more than just their free cupcake. <laughs> and number five is under promise and over deliver. I think one of the greatest things that you can do is delight your customers by going the extra mile. And that's something as little as including like a cake care card in your orders as you send them out the door. And, and most of you bakers know, it's just a card that you can stick on a box or make a sticker and slap it on a box. It just tells them, you know, if it needs to be refrigerated, if you have leftovers, how to freeze it, if you want to freeze it, things like that, so that they don't have to wonder, gosh, should we refrigerate this? Or gosh, can I freeze this? They don't have to call. You have the information all right there for them. You could include like a thank you note. I think a lost art these days is a handwritten note saying thank you. Thank you for your business. I appreciate you. It doesn't have to be this long love letter. It could just be a simple thank you and sign your name. You could also offer a little extra sample or an extra product. I know I've seen a lot of bakers when people order like a first birthday cake, they will include a free little number one cake, uh, like a smash cake, little things like that, that, that are unexpected will surprise and delight your customers. And really make them appreciate you and make them want to come back and be a repeat customer. You could also offer free delivery. You could also offer a little discount card for them to come back and use on their next order or their next purchase. So little things like that, I think really make a difference that cost you little to nothing to really surprise and delight your customers. All right, guys, I just, I hope that was helpful. I hope you've got some great ideas. I hope this will help grow your audience if you're just getting started. And even if you're not, you're just looking for uh, ways to, to grow and expand your, your business. And if you want, I have this all in a PDF for you. You can go to frostediowa.com slash grow, and you can print this out and refer to it uh, when you're looking for ideas on how to grow. So have a great day and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure you subscribe to the Hey Cupcake podcast. And I'd love if you would just take a minute to leave a review, share about it on Facebook or Instagram, and let me know which episode has helped you the most. And I'll see you back here next week.